welcome food fans, picky eaters, the flavor curious, and everyone in between. Nothing makes good food better than good conversation. And your table is ready. Come right this way to the Food for Thoughtcast with your host, Melissa Reagan. But you can call her chef. All right, let's get this episode started. Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thought cast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan. Joining me, um, thank God, Chef Steven Gonzalez, <laughs> my co-host with the most. What's up, guy? Hey, buddy. How's it going? Good. Hey, buddy. Um, he's got a co-co-host over there. There's a small dog um, somewhere. In There's small lap, dogs in every in, laps, apparently. In lap proximity. Oh, my gosh. It's so adorable. You're so sweet. He's adorable um, until he accidentally clicks out of this link and then, you know, the podcast is <laughs> ruined. You can't let him near the keyboard. Do no, not no ruin idea. the podcast, tiny dog. Um, but yeah, me and Steve and his little co-pilot, uh, we're going to talk about movie theater snacks today. But first, what was the most amazing thing you ate this week, Steve? Okay, so because I'm still kind of like dieting and stuff like that. I had, I'm allowed to have some sirloin steak. So that, uh, a little bit of some avocado, some uh, mm -hmm. spinach, things like that, right? Just cook it on the cast iron. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. it always gives it that extra good little mm -hmm. flavor. And so I just want everyone to know that. So we made a cherry pie. I had like maybe a spoon full of it. Really? You know, I'm, I'm still trying to watch it. But, nice. you know, we're making videos <laughs> and I can't not eat it because then it's like, Mm, everyone imagine what this would taste like yeah yeah just pretend so. i ate this <laughs> oh yeah i'm not gonna lie we used some pickled cherries and oh, it was yes. so good we did like a cherry streusel pie streusel cherry pie mm -hmm. uh, oh so good i saw pictures and it looked amazing and i, I absolutely love like cherry pie and i love streusel like i like texture a lot on pie so oh i kind of blame you for the streusel because i was like you know what that does sound like it would be pretty dope you know, it was the best. Yeah. The only thing that I learned, though, is to kind of crumble it up and then put it on there, not just pour it all on there, because then it just looks like sand on top. But when it sets yeah. up, holy cow, is it good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be kind of uniform, <laughs> even though the entire idea. Even though. Th is that it's not uniform, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, pardon me if I got interrupted. I was muting the mic there because there was an entire cavalcade of dogs furiously running through my kitchen. Um, for what reason? I don't know, but they're keeping me safe from something. Um, the wind, is, um, yeah. Butterflies farting. I, I don't, I have no idea. Ghosts. Yeah. Like boogeyman's. Yeah. Um, they're doing a great job, a great job. They just have to do it while we're recording. though. Um, so then what's the most amazing thing you had this week? Well, I've been on a stuffed potato kick, so mm. I have been putting like a couple boneless pork chops or some chicken breast into the bottom of the crock pot before I leave for work, put a little of that Finch habanero barbecue sauce on yeah. top, a couple of parchment paper wrapped um, Yukon gold potatoes. And then when you get home, you just cut the potato open like a baked potato, shred the meat, throw it inside. It's ready to go. It's, it's a funny because we keep circling back to Finch barbecue. And I remember it's that good. habanero barbecue sauce. It was a little too much for me, but man, was it good. Like a little yeah. bit goes on such a long yeah. way. Yeah. I find that if I, if I can cut it a little bit with like a little bit of butter, if I need to, but mm. I also have the regular one. And so 
Um, I can go half seas on each, but yeah, I've just been, it got cold again. So I'm just like, I just want like a baked potato. Like I want something comforting and like creamy <laughs> and smushy, you know? And so that's, yeah. that's what I've been into <laughs> lately. Nice. So I've been on a shredded wheat kick too, but it is what it is. Like I, like I was just, wheat. I was just telling a dear friend of mine yesterday. And then, and then my mom the day before that I should really just cut the middleman out and buy the frosted shredded wheat because if I buy the regular, I'm putting sugar on it. <laughs> yeah, might as well. I was like, I don't know who I'm trying to make feel better about this, like that I didn't buy the frosted kind, but let's just stop lying. Okay. Right. <laughs> like it's really, really good. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it, man. Yeah. Steve, let's Steve, speaking of do it, let let's do this podcast. Um, I was going to be like, let's do it. And then I realized it sounded like, yeah. no, <laughs> we're not that podcast. <laughs> this, this is not that podcast. Um, that's like, oh, like a pineapple logo. <laughs> this is <a> pineapple <laughs> logo over there. Um, so anyway, uh, Steve, what was the last movie you watched in a theater? Um, oh, it was the iron claw. The one that recently came out oh, with yeah. uh, Zac uh -huh. Efron about the Von Erich. Yep. Holy cow, was it good. Did you enjoy it? It was long. It was sad, but it was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they, they have kind of a tortured story. You know that the Sportatorium is here in Dallas, and yep. it's, you know, there's a bunch of local lore mixed with the actual truth. But, yeah, they, they had a troubled, you know, trajectory. I've watched numerous documentaries on them. Nice. Yeah. Um, gosh. I don't really got to think about it. The last movie I saw. Oh, sad. The last movie I saw in the movie theater was Napoleon on Thanksgiving Day. Um, you know yeah. what's so funny? Yeah, yeah. How, well, how was it? Was it good or no? It was weird, but so was Napoleon. So it's okay. Um, Every time people say that, I've gotten <laughs> so conditioned to expect the second word to be dynamite. Uh, it was <laughs> and I'm like, that was, that's like early 2000s. Come on, man. Grow okay, up. so... Now you got me thinking the next time I go to a movie theater, I'm going to put, I'm going to wear um, sweatpants with a zippered pocket, like cargo pockets. And I'm going <laughs> to take, take my own tots into the movie theater. There you and go. Then, yeah. Oh, I love that movie. Okay. We have to get our friends over at the good day for a movie podcast to let you and I come on so they can review Napoleon Dynamite. I'm putting that out in the universe. Right do now. That. We're going to put that juju out in the world. Jacob Rock, we want the next guest spot, okay? Um, <laughs> hey, there's your co-host. <laughs> um, all right, so am I we, right? We, we, what's up with that? Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so when you went to the movies, did you eat a snack while you were there? I totally did. I What'd was on the fence of not doing it, but you can't not go to the movie theater and not have a snack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you walk up the line and you get some candy, some uh, Reese's Pieces, because that's always good. Uh, I don't know, do you drink like do you drink beer when you go to the movie theater or no? It depends on which theater. So if I I think we talked about in the appetizers and kind of like starters episode. Mm -hmm about how I love a theme. Like, man, if you theme something. Um, so I sometimes, so, yeah. yeah, sometimes if there is, um, if like Alamo Draft House is doing like a promotional and they have a certain beer that's going to go with the movie in some way, like Oppenheimer had like a, the Manhattan Project, like one of the yeah, beers. For sure. And it, it was kitschy and fun. It made sense. And it's a really tasty beer. It really depends on what I'm eating. But typically... No, because if I'm just going to my run of the mill AMC, it's like uh, you know they had like the freestyle machine. Right. So, what about you? I don't. Uh, I maybe if there's like a theme, you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like mm -hmm. at Alamo Draft House, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I typically, well, it depends what kind of mood I'm in, you know. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this last time, no, I got we got a pizza. I got. Uh, a bottle of water. Uh, my wife got a slushy because she was just craving one. Mm -hmm. And Reese's Pieces, you know? Yeah. The old the old icy. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah. well, I think that one of the last times I drank, drank, right, for like a, a, a movie 
Um, I went to Studio Movie Girl with a friend way back to see uh, Wakanda Forever. And I ended up getting a, um, but a couple, uh, gin and ta- no, gin and soda, I think, and, and a beer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It kind of depends. But if it's just a run of the mill theater run, then like, no. It's a <laughs> soda. It's a soda or water. It just depends. So, I don't, well, I don't drink a lot of sodas to begin with. So there's also that. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 I do have to give it up to the movie theater. Like nowadays, like their pizzas are not bad. They're it's not bad. I would, I would liken it to like a, uh, a QT. Like, yeah. Like, like kind of somewhere between thick, somewhere between thin, um, crust. And, um, it's, I, Hey, it doesn't suck. Like it's not like, no, not yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's we're not. It's not like white truffle gold leaf pizza, but like it ain't terrible either. Um, I think the the selections have gone a long way. I not that I would eat white truffle gold leaf pizza, but I don't think I would either. I I couldn't afford it. I'm too cheap. (laughs) I was in the moment. I was like, think of the think of the nicest pizza place you know. And I was like, well, kind of by definition, like a pizza is not elitist. (laughs) Like I was like, well. Uh okay, just to make a point. Right. Yeah, just to, make, <laughs> just to illustrate my point better. Um I uh I, I I like to have a bunch of options um when I see a movie and like I said I love when something's themed. You asked me about Napoleon. I <laughs> I went with a coworker um and we turned to each other mm-hmm. about 40 minutes in. He was like you want to keep watching this? And I was like, I'm invested now. I mean, I'll say if you're going to stay, like we had, co- we had gone to the theater in one car. We were both in um, another city for work. And it was like, I mean, yeah, but it's kind of <laughs> weird. It's kind of awkward. It's had a lot of sex scenes in it, but I mean, I ended up enjoying it. So like, yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you eat? French fries, French toast. Well, so this one, <laughs> the French fries, the Napoleon, yeah, no, um, <laughs> right? But see, I always go German. Let's try and do the French. <laughs> How the appropriate. French fries. Z- <laughs> yeah, I just works. Borat. It's just Borat. Very nice. Very nice. It's a French fries. Uh, I'm I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> what did I have? I always get, almost always get raisinets, and they had dark chocolate. So that was Thanksgiving, and I had eaten, so I didn't need food food. I got a soda uh, and raisinets. Um, yeah, and he got popcorn. So, Do you do popcorn like still to this yeah. day? Dude, do I? Yes. <laughs> like, I can't yes. get a big thing of popcorn. I mean, like, it's, it's the funniest thing, because I will have – like my wife will get a big tub of popcorn mm-hmm. and I always tell myself, I don't want that much. I don't want that much popcorn. And I end up eating most of it. So sometimes like they have the little uh, kids meal or the kids packed or snack pack or something at, at AMC. And it comes with fruit gummies. It's like Welch's fruit gummies. <laughs> um, and it comes with a tiny bag of popcorn. Sometimes that's enough. But when you, when you're going to go watch like an Epic, right. And it's like two, three hours long. If I haven't had dinner, I'm I'm doing like a burger or something. But I yeah, you also, make you want to go to a movie now. Thanks. Yeah, my bad. So I but I also want popcorn and and I'm pretty terrible about it. I yeah I'm not gonna say it's like Karen level, but I'm very specific about. <laughs> I'm like, hey, can you guys not fill it all the way up? And then I take it over to the butter thing and put the orange popcorn salt over it. And then I'm like, okay, you can put the rest of it in here. It's layered. Like I know, would do that but, too. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I could bring a bag that's like twice as big and because I like to like shake the M&Ms in the warm popcorn sometimes. I've never done that. <laughs> okay. You want to hear something even more ridiculous though? Yeah. Sometimes I'm now as I'm older, I have like acid reflux all the time because being an adult <laughs> isn't fun. But I'll, I used to quite often, I would get the pickled jalapenos from the nacho condiment bar and I would just pile them into the popcorn and mix it up. Ooh. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I'm I, such a feral trash panda. Like, <laughs> just... I, I would love, like, when I was a kid, I would get the nachos, and I would always have, like, the leftover cheese in the cup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would just dump my popcorn in that. Yeah. And that was always good, too. That sounds incredible, dude. That right. sounds so good. I, I um, 
Yeah. I should do that. Kudos. Of course, I, I hate getting my hands dirty, as mm. weird as that sounds. So I would yeah. have to eat it with like a spoon or something. Well, you have to grab like a massive wad of napkins and then you have yeah. extra ones for the, you have <laughs> yeah, extra exactly. ones for the car later. You have like car napkins. Um, yeah. I, dude, I really like popcorn and I like it to be kind of, I, I like that orange powdery popcorn salt so much that I have made the inside of my mouth raw. Like I can, I can <laughs> specifically the one that just dehydrate you. Yeah. It's like, so you kind of talk like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sucks all the spit out of your mouth. I can remember when star Wars was re-released. It was like an anniversary re-released to theaters when I was a kid. So I guess I have no idea what the number of years would have been like 15 or 10th. I have no idea. So I, I can't tell you, I can tell you though, that I did not want to share my popcorn. So out of spite, I dumped that orange powder like all <laughs> over the top to Ooh. the point where when the person next to me tried to grab some, they nearly choked on it That um, is because awesome. I'm petty and I don't have to share my food. <laughs> thank you. Exactly. So thank you very so, much. So you mentioned putting M&Ms in your popcorn. Yes. What kind of M&Ms? Peanut. Hello. Okay. I was yeah. going to say, like, I like those, uh, those crispy M&Ms. I like the crispy oh, M&Ms too. I mean, so we could start with movie candy, right? So okay. I always go to Five Below or my dear brother will go to Five Below for meeting for a movie and he'll get a couple of the large boxes because they're on sale. See, the ticket price is like whatever, but the food prices are a robbery. That's how they get That's you. That's true. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, I think I spent like 40 bucks for a pizza, a water, a slushy, and uh and then the Reese's Pieces. And I was like, mm -hmm. huh. I might have spent more than that yeah. too, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, are you like a <laughs> junior mint or milk duds person or not really? If it's going to be a different candy, sometimes I'll get, you know, it depends on how long the movie is, right? So sometimes I'll get two different boxes of candy. Um, it's always one of them is always going to be Raisinets. And then sometimes the second one is Whoppers. And Ooh, then I like Whoppers too. Yeah, yeah, dude, I really do. And then sometimes if they don't have Whoppers, it's Skittles. Did you ever eat snow caps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I think I did. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have a strange affinity for all movie candy, whether it's good or crap. <laughs> um, I really do. For me, it's like the whole experience. It's the entire experience. I, dude, I can tell you the best sneak in job I ever did at the movies the Thanks. best yeah did you ever see a movie called cloud atlas no with tom hanks it's no. like four hours long that's Which a little bit that? that's a little bit i can't even tell you what it's about because i still don't know oh. it, <laughs> yeah, there's no, like there's like six concurrent storylines and oh, i don't man. know i don't recommend it you're not missing anything um i'll never forget because it was election day and i had the day off and i can't remember what year i think it's maybe like um 2008 seems hmm. right um i got I, I went i went and did some errands like i washed my car i went and voted i went to <laughs> i went to tom thumb there was a tom thumb uh it's actually randall's in austin and it's right next to right up the street from the movie theater i got a six pack of coors light like the little baby cans nice and i got um one of those microwave gas station pizzas, like where you pull it out of the case and it's cold and then you like slit the plastic and they have like right. a microwave there for like the communal use you microwave, right? In? Dude, yeah. It was November. It was it must have been blustery because I had a jacket and when they played the THX speaker sound, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, that's it. awesome. And I was looking around like I'm gonna get I'm going to get in so much trouble, but I feel so amazing right now. And yeah, after that movie, I did need six beers. I don't know if it helped me or hurt me <laughs> in my understanding of the movie, but like, yeah, worth it. Worth it. I've never, I haven't since snuck anything in that was so ambitious. I was really proud of that. I so remember <laughs> one time I went to the movie theater and right before then we went to, um, I think it was Whole Foods. It just got yeah. a bunch of like their... Like real gourmet cookies and stuff like that. Oh, their bulk section with all the candies is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that's what we did. And <laughs> I don't remember what all we got, but I just remember leaving sick from all that sugar. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. 
And then it was funny because like I also used to have friends that worked at another movie theater. Mm -hmm. and they would just give me in for free, whatever I wanted. And mm -hmm. they'd say, what do you want to eat? And so I'd get food and stuff like that. They would comp everything except for alcohol. So I was like, well, I'm not going to get alcohol. So we're good. So and it's free. <laughs> I would get burgers and pizzas and not like whatever I wanted. It was like oh, the yeah. best. And if my friends ever listen to this, I will not throw their names out because I don't want to get them in trouble. <laughs> but thank you so much for that. You have no clue. Um, I think I went on a uh, junk food bender once. I, I caught a double feature while we were in culinary school. It was Napoleon Dynamite. And a bunch of people walked out. And so I was there in the theater alone and I did, um, I did Skittles and I did, uh, what are this, what are the gummy worms called that are, are the sour, trolleys? sour, bright crawlers? Yeah, it's really or I always like call that. them trolleys. Like, yeah, 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 I yeah. think that's the name of them. Yeah. 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 That's the brand. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're yeah. right. Smart, smart man. I did those, right. This is the, in, in the afternoon. I think it was this Saturday. Cause I had the day off school and I had the day off work. So I went to go see this movie. Everybody walked out. I was laughing my butt off because it's hilarious. I ate two different kinds of candy. I had popcorn and a soda. I ended up getting nachos. I ended up being the only person in the theater. So I put my feet up on the seat. Then I walked out and I was like, it's almost a different meal time. I ordered a pizza to the curb. The guy delivered it to me sitting on the curb. And then I went back in the movie, like shotgun the pizza Went back in the movies and watched The Village. It was an epic. Movie. That was a good movie. It was a really good movie. I liked it. I liked it. It was nice. like when M. Night Shyamalan made good movies. <laughs> right? <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I remember one time I snuck a flask in and I proceeded to just catch a really good buzz. And mm -hmm. I was watching John Wick 2 and we were with some friends. And... There was some people on the left of my wife and there were some people who brought like their three kids on the right of my friends. Keep in mind, these kids were not above four years old. Like they were not mm. older than four years old. Mm. And of course they're going to see John Wick too. And it's oh, just man. headshot and guns and violence. Mm. And they yeah. start, these kids start crying and I'm not going to lie. I got to the point where I was like, <laughs> like just, I was just shushing the shit out of them. I was so irritated and angry, and they finally got the hint and left. And it's like, what is wrong with you? Why would you take your kids to a rated R movie like that? Like, just find a sitter and don't be those people. But yet, here they were. <laughs> and so, just to be petty, we saw them playing games on the way out, and I, and I still shushed them on my way out. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what you get, Jeez, you jerk. Steven. <laughs> don't be don't bring your two year old. Like ruined, to, uh, ruined my movie time. Yeah. Um <laughs> all right. So we know kind of what each other's you know plan of attack is at the movie theater now. I'm a little bit all over the place. Um it yeah, it's a little this and that, but let's talk about how movie theater snacks got their start. Tell so me. in the 90s and 1920s and 30s, they had Nickelodeons. It's it's not the TV channel. Um, huh. You know, it's our generation, right? It's it nothing to do with slime. Um, they would have these, uh, you know, it's like places that you could watch movies, kind of, and you would look into a viewer, but they were replaced. They began to be replaced by upscale movie theaters, and they were really nice. They were kind of patterned after more European influences. They would have like marble lined hallways, crystal chandeliers, billiards rooms, daycare drop-off centers. Like this sounds amazing. We don't have any of that now. They kind of plasticified everything. <laughs> so yep. like, I want to see a movie theater from the forties, but yeah. And so um, apparently back then, just like now, it was a really big problem that ticket holders would ignore all the rules and they would bring in their own snacks. Right. So, oh, we, totally. We clearly do. <laughs> <laughs> so all of the classic candies came about in this time. So that includes Goobers, Milk Duds, Raisinets. These are all from 1925, 26, and 27. And then I, I didn't know this. Uh, there was a classic candy called the Bob White, which eventually got broken up into snow caps that we were talking yep. about earlier. So it used to be one big piece. That and was, then, yeah, what else that was, came with uh, that? 
Dude, well, that was released in 1922. And then, did you know that Twizzlers were invented in the mid 1800s? Mm, yeah, I read that and mm -hmm. I was kind of amazed. I thought it was like in early 1900s, but that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. 1800s. And then there was a candy that was called Classic Raspberry Vines created in 1920, and they rebranded it later on to be Red Vines. So Are Red, Red Vines still around? Yes. Red Vines and Twizzlers have been fighting against each other since the 1920s. Is that insane? That's crazy. That is... I know. That's crazy. So, yeah. I love uh, that, you know, <laughs> these snacks just get more and more wild. Like, the evolution of the movie snack has come a long way from just yeah. candy and stuff you know yeah there used to be you know three or four choices and they were things that were popular um at that time but then came the great depression and so uh they really needed to start making a lot more money and um yep. they needed to give people a reason to spend that money even though times were tough and so they installed candy machines in the lobbies of most movie theaters and uh, they would rather do that than pay a person, you know, that would sell the snacks, like by carrying them up and down the aisles. And so they started to design theaters differently and they would incorporate concession stands into those designs. Well, they needed something that could be made in a small amount of space for very, very cheap. It wouldn't go bad and it didn't cost a lot to produce. And thus popcorn became the leading movie theater snack. That was 1885, the first popcorn machine was invented. Right? Did you, dang, I didn't realize that was that long ago. Yeah, 1885, the wow. machine was invented. During the Depression, it rose to peak popularity because it was one of the cheapest things to produce. And then Harkins Theaters, uh, the fifth largest independent movie chain in the country, it still is the best seller, followed nationally by soda, pretzels, nachos, and hot dogs. Yeah, um, all those things just sound good right now. I kind of want one of each of those things. Uh, in the <laughs> in the mid century, uh, moviegoers had new options. These included Junior Mints. So, do you like Junior Mints? They're all right. I'll eat them from time to time, but not very often. So apparently, Junior Mints are named after a Broadway play called Junior Miss that starred Shirley Temple. Um, also, around this time, those the gummy, uh, the dots came around. I hate those things. It's like a pencil yeah, those eraser. are disgusting. I'm not a fan. Um, M&Ms were invented. They were popular with American GIs in World War II because they melt in your mm. mouth and not in your hand. Not in your hand. So right. they made they they made them part of the uh, combat time rations. Also came around in the 1970s. Sour Patch Kids. And because then first they're sour, then they're sweet. Then they're sweet. And then in the 1980s, <laughs> right, when the Cabbage Patch Kids came out, the Sour Patch Kids uh, decided to jump on the popularity of that. They rebranded the packaging and they began to sell even more. Initially, Sour Patch Kids were invented um, as kind of like around the UFO craze. And then yep. uh, later on was Reese's Pieces in 1978. The best uh, one. The best one. Do, do you say Reese's Pieces or Reese's Pieces? Reese's Pieces. Yeah. I, I know, dude. I know. Sometimes I had to think about that one. I was like, wait, did I say Reese's Pieces? <laughs> that would be weird. Y'all don't come for me. If you say it wrong, you're wrong. I'll just leave it at that. So those were invented in 1978, and they didn't really sell all that well until E.T. ate them. In the because movie E.T. E. found home. Uh, yeah, because E.T. liked good candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then huh. Skittles were imported from Europe uh, starting in 1979. I had no idea that Skittles came from Europe, so I was today years old when I learned that. <laughs> I zero idea. Um, I would have guessed, I don't know, in uh, California... Florida, somewhere with all the sunshine and the rainbows. I have no idea. Um, so what happened next, Steve, you might ask? Uh, movie theaters. The times, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Was uh, a nice, the, that was a very 90s, nice summary right? of everything. I like this. This is good. Nice. Well, in the 90s and beyond, uh, movie theaters still needed to find a way to make more and more money. So they had popcorn. They had candy. They had giant sodas. Hot dogs, 
nachos uh, and ice cream, um, like novelty ice cream items, right? Like bars and ice cream sandwiches. Can you pre do ice cream during right? a movie? I can't because it melts and then I get it all over myself and I'm all pissed off. Okay, so I will tell you, I make an exception to that rule. If if they have like the pack, like the pouch of like, you know, frozen cookie dough bites, yes, I will throw okay, it out. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I'll have like a, a boozy milkshake at Alamo. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. That's different because it's in a glass or a cup. Like grass yeah. or shake. But no, I'm not eating like an ice cream cone at the movies, though. No. <laughs> no. Well, what do people do that? Um, you know, that's strange. <laughs> All right, so there were chains uh, born out of this movement to give people more things to eat and drink at the movies, such as Nighthawk that originated in Brooklyn, I Pick Theaters in Scottsdale, Arizona, and the Alamo Draft House founded yeah. in Austin, Texas. Yes, they not only offer food and drink, um, but they also were doing things like Q&A panels, celebrity guests, and live music, and then theme nights where they designed the menu around it. And then, of course, you have uh, chains like AMC and uh, Cinemark that are doing um, hot food and, you know, they have things like chicken tenders, uh, burgers, quesadillas, pizzas, et cetera, et cetera. And, it, it, you know, honestly, I have to say I love all of it. I love I do too. all yeah. of it. <laughs> it's always a hard decision. Like, I always want to get a burger from these places, but then I think – I wonder how good this burger is going to be. One day I'm going to have to try it just to say I did it. But I was rather impressed with pizza. So, um, Well, I will say I've had a couple of things from AMC that really surprised me. The so pretzel, the the, the uh, giant kind of Bavarian style pretzel, really mm -hmm. impressive. Like nice pretzel to salt ratio. I don't know that they make them there. I, I would venture to say that they probably buy the dough frozen. And it's like a par cook situation. And then they, they bake them there, but they do a really good job. And then they have kind of their hallmark burger on their menu. It has uh, bacon jam and um, yeah, I think it has brie on it, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. It's really, really good. Um, but yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going in there expecting hope cuisine, but I want, I want to be able to make <laughs> but a they're meal. they're getting there. That's it. the crazy right? part. Like, it's, it's happening. You know, do you ever I think like I mentioned, list? go ahead. Oh, yeah. 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 Mozzarella sticks, chicken wings, all that stuff. That, uh, that appetizer platter that they have is. Yeah. It's really pretty good. good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Dude. No. yeah. They just, yeah. Uh, but I don't hey, know. oh, so you were saying Alamo? Al well, I was just gonna say Alamo Draft House. They have like amazing falafel and shawarma, and like they have a really, really good. <laughs> they have a really, really, really good I avocado avocado toast. Like, yeah, I mean, they're getting there. There's definitely options everywhere. Uh, Studio Movie Girl has fantastic chicken nachos. Um, I mean, hey, y'all. Sometimes I want everything in one spot. I don't want to make two stops for dinner in a movie. So. That's true. I mean, <laughs> they, they are very um, smart about doing like the one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's also that. Do you, so, okay. So we're talking about being at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. What about when you're watching the movie at home? So at home is a completely different animal. I, I can actually answer this quite well. Um, I ended up, I got home very late uh, this past Friday and I ended up watching a movie and at that time of night, I'm not, I'm not eating dinner. Like I had, right. I had a diet uh, Coke uh, and that was it. I diet Coke in one hand, the remote in the other. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, you know, if I have time, then I will prepare like a really good, like hearty sandwich. Cause mm -hmm. of course you all know, I love sandwiches and mm -hmm. it's gotta have like that real crispy, like cut your mouth, type of bread yeah yeah yeah. and then of course like we'll go through at least a bottle of wine mm -hmm. and it's like a good time you know mm -hmm. and you can have whatever you want like yeah you're not i mean just like pizzas and wings and not that i don't mind it you know it's like an event uh so there was a restaurant i used to work at in austin that had they would do like spaghetti West would serve spaghetti and a bottle of red wine with it. It was like a deal. They would do a projector like on the patio. Uh -huh. It was legit. Or they would show like Shaft and then you could buy like a 40 on special. 
right? Nice. Like, I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty clever. And so I think making an event out of it is, is something, you know, it's, it's really neat. It's super fun to do. Uh, I can't say, you know, oftentimes I'm trying to like cram a movie in between life events here and there. And so it's like, well, uh, either I'm eating what I already made for dinner or, I'm eating leftovers. I don't have anything exciting to report, Stephen. Now, if I was going to invite somebody over to watch a movie, I would totally theme it. I would theme a menu out. So yeah. we have a projector, and we're finally getting to the point where we can, uh, where we started having friends over and watching like The mm -hmm. Meg and stuff like that. Yeah. We even watched uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Nice. You know, one night. And you know, we we didn't tie all the food in mostly because like it was just a chill night. Like when we watched the Meg, I think I ended up falling asleep in the pool just because you're rocking and all that food's just kind of going in your stomach back and forth. It was a good time. And when we watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, we just had I think we just had margaritas, and that was just that was perfect. You know? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it has to match, but I think there are some movies that lend themselves to it. Like, yeah, looking back on like it, we if, probably should have made some barbecue to go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A little bit, right? I mean, I think that, you know, if you invited somebody over to watch the menu, I mean, I don't know, spoilers if anybody hasn't seen it. I would make, like, the most bomb, like, an Anthony Bourdain-style burger with, like, QP mayo. You know, like, I, I would make a smash burgers, like. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. what we need to do next <laughs> is figure out, like, get one of those uh, inflatable trays so that way we can just float food to people. Mm -hmm. that I've, would be I've seen them i've seen them at resorts like i don't know if you've seen this on tiktok but there are a number of resorts out there that will do like an entire street taco uh thing that's on a floating tray and yeah. this the server is way steep in the water and they will like float it out to you in your infinity pool that's like attached to your room it is wild it's yeah. crazy you just I would, gave me a great idea i, I would completely do that well we can offline this. Steve, when we get done, I'll show you some trays that I have that would probably be fantastic. I'm yeah, you got it. You got it. He's like Googling it right now, y'all. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, episode recording be danged. I'm going to research this right now. Uh, yeah, before I forget, because I will forget. Mm, but, mm, yeah, that's, that's what fair. I think that's going to be a good idea. Like this summer when it finally gets warm and like I have a weekend off. Yeah, yeah. we'll have friends over and we'll have themed food and whatnot now, now it's just figuring out how to keep it well, warm right well it's the dive in movies it's designed a menu that you, doesn't need to be warm you know it's yeah. your, your party you know i think it sounds it sounds amazing I um like i will the, say the words go dive ahead, in movie dive in movie it's the best dive in movie. i didn't make it up it's from somewhere I, somewhere in my life in my past it's in my consciousness somewhere i didn't <laughs> i can't take credit for it but um somebody has done it but Hey, there's some foods that I will not eat at the movies. What about you? There are some foods I am not ordering at the movies. Such as? Wings. I probably would. Well, it, you me. know what, though? I'm very reluctant to. I have to make sure I wash my hands before I get them. Because it's like having chicken wings at a bowling alley. It's just gross. <laughs> you don't want to touch the arm of that. See, you don't have to touch, like... The doorway, if you're trying to find your way out in the dark to the bath, like, no, man. It, oh, it's just How a dark magnet. movie are you going to? What kind of movies are you going to? I can see hey. very clear. With, all, <laughs> with the way that they build movie theaters nowadays, like, you can see everything. Like, all the seats, the rows, everything. I'm old. And they're a lot smaller. They're a lot more intimate. I don't know about you, but, like, the, the movie theaters that we've been going to, like, they they just seem smaller, less seats. And I kind of like that. I think so. I mean, I think it has something to do with they're changing the way that the experience is perceived, but then I think it, all, it also has a lot to do with controlling overhead and costs for the theater. Yeah. Um, they can't pack it. They pack, pack those people in like they used to. Um, fried pickles. I don't enjoy those at a movie theater. Can't say it, fried pickles at smelly. a movie theater though. It's smelly for your neighbor. You know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't say I would have like tater tots or stuff like that, but <laughs> you know, stranger things have happened. I'm not I'm opposed not, to uh, it. Because I, I would I'm eat not them opposed to a, a cheese fry. I think I would eat yeah. them with a fork. Yeah, 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 yeah. But of all things, on the flip side of that, right at Alamo, like typically my order is a 
burger or sandwich of some sort, or maybe if they have their pizzas, their uh, like flatbread pizza is yeah. pretty good. Um, sometimes they have themed ones. Like I went to go see 80 for Brady and they had like a, a pretty ridiculously delicious Brussels sprout, Parmesan and bacon pizza. It was like fine shredded Brussels, really nice. tasty, a lot of garlic oil on the crust. And like, I think there was some pesto really legit. Um, I was, I was really pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, but then usually I get a salad. So Caesar salad's hard to eat. Uh, I don't know if I can ever get a season. salad at a movie though. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I was, I was at home. Eh. I think it, I think it's me. I think my mentality is always like, you know, balance this out with a vegetable. <laughs> I have yet to find a place at, like a movie theater that'll do like tacos. I mean, if they're going mm. all out, they might as well add tacos and bur burritos would be the way to go, though. Oh, that sounds all, really It's all rolled good. up and you can't make too much of a mess. I mean, you can make a mess, but not too much. That sounds great. Or you just or you just sneak in breakfast burritos. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that I would probably do. I have... Um... I have some pretty good sneaking skills. Now, somebody that's like high up in the movie business is going to hear this episode and they're going to put me on a list somewhere. And then I'm going to get like all my bags searched the next time I go to <laughs> a movie. That's why I don't wear tight jeans. I That's why all that's my jeans are very shorts, baggy. Man. Well, yeah, they're baggy so that we can hide <laughs> stuff in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. So is it always Reese's Pieces for you or is there anything else? Oh, what was the the Kit Kat, the, the Bunch of Crunch or something like that? Oh, gosh, those are I so good. I used to love that, oh. too. Mm. Yeah. That, let's see, Kit Kats. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are like my staples Like that I, I have to have at least one of those when I go to the theater. Yeah, yeah. I came off a very uh, long day at work, and I can't remember how – uh, I pulled this off, but it was either y'all gonna make so much fun of me somewhere. Um, Never. I can't remember if it was like Logan or Murder on the Orient Express, or even if those came out in the same year. I'm getting my my memories and my experiences mixed up. But I was super tired and trying to stay awake, um, and so I had like a whole bunch of sodas. But then I remembered that I had for whatever reason like open red wine in the car, and I went <laughs> like. Like I went, I had my ticket stub and so I was like, I go to the bathroom, I'll be right back. And like, I took, I put my cup up my sleeve and then I filled it up with red wine and drank red wine out of a plastic cup with a straw for the rest. I'm not opposed to drinking red wine out of a solo cup. So yeah, yeah no judgment. Um, it's not the worst thing I've ever done by far. I mean, um, it's not like you're drinking Logan, like famous or silver. Oak Logan was, no dude, it wasn't it, not even, not, not by far. Uh, <laughs> I ain't <even> close. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't Franzia either, but it was something a little bit. I think it was like um, Menage a Trois or something, um, you know, like a blend. And yeah, for sure. Um, Logan was, oh, this had to be Murder on the Orient Express because wine makes me sleepy. And then I slept through the rest of it. So because <laughs> Logan was too exciting to sleep through. So <laughs> Murder on the yeah. Orient Express. I think I've seen that one, but it, I think it was kind of, it was all right. I think it I fell asleep through that one too. It was all right. My problem is that like, <laughs> We used to watch a bunch of movies and I would mm -hmm. fall asleep in every single one of them because mm -hmm. I would get too comfortable. So, well, it's cold and it's dark and hopefully. Oh, no, this is that. This is when we watch it on our sofa. That's how oh, comfortable well, our sofa dude, is, too. If I have assumed the position at the arm of the couch and I have a dog on each side and like I lean my head back on the back of that couch and it is done, it is finished. Yeah. The only thing they don't they should offer, I think, during like cold spells is soup. Tom cheese. That would be dope if they had them at the movie theater. Cheese? Wait. Tom cheese. Tomato tomato soup and grilled cheese. Oh, wow. At the movies? Why not? If it's cold outside or if it's cold in the theater. That's I'm a little just strange, not that, but I'm not that coordinated. I would just end up with it all over me. Like it would be in well, my lap. See, hear me out. You have to have it in a mug. Like oh yes, like a sippable soup yeah, situation. To where you like, I don't yeah. know about you, but I love drinking soups out of like my big old uh, Yeti cups or Cody cups and all that stuff. Those insulated ones, it's hot as can be and it burns my mouth every time. But you know what? <laughs> you just sip on it and you just enjoy it. So then the grilled cheese just comes on the side. It'd be like or grilled really cheese sticks. It, That'd be awesome. I was gonna say, dude, get out of my head. I was gonna say cut it in sticks so you can dip it. See, <laughs> if someone owns a movie theater, they can they please. can steal my idea. Someone, I'm not copyright. Someone out there, someone out there, please. 
Yeah. Well, see? Steve, we've talked about all the things that, you know, we want to see in movie theaters. And we talked about a brief history of the snacks in American movie theaters. But I would love to take us through a list of movie theater snacks around the world. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. Apparently in Japan, you can get giant bags of sardine rice crackers. You want to talk about something that's smelly when you eat it for your neighbor. Dude, um, I like shrimp chips. I would totally eat them. Dude, I really like shrimp chips too. I'm glad that you said that. Uh, they're it's delicious. weird, but yeah, I'd be all about it. Yeah, so these are giant bags of kind of a sweet, savory, and umami because they are treated with soy um, soy sauce, a little sugar, and sometimes sesame seeds. And they are packaged, uh, they're pre-packaged. All the fish have the tiny skeletons still in them. And people are just munching on them. It's kind of like a pork rind, except not pork. And but also, it's not. yeah, <laughs> but it's not. Um, apparently, the little crispy flakes look like bait, uh, strips of cooked bacon. So I am super intrigued by this. So I think the next time I go to the Asian market, like I'm going to have to get some and report back. So hmm. that's all there is to it. I. I cannot believe it. If I rolled into my AMC with these, though, I would be, like, found out 100%. So I was doing a little research, and, like, in Korea, they have dried cuttlefish. Could you do Ooh. that in theater? No. I don't like cuttlefish to begin with. I think it's for parakeets only. <laughs> well, they, uh, they serve <laughs> dried and shredded. It's supposed to be, like, the delicacy is not served in a plate of popcorn. It's served with it as two snacks with opposing textures, like chewy and crunchy, I guess you could say. So it's served dried and shredded, huh? I could try it. I wasn't a fan of cuttlefish, like, when I tried it the first time, but I also don't, don't think that I had it prepared well. I don't even think, <laughs> like, I think Americans would lose their minds if there was predominantly seafood items on a movie theater menu. Like, if it wasn't, like, popcorn shrimp. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think it's been very, very, like, packaged and programmed to be a certain way right um, for sure so where else where else around the world serves something um, unusual what about what about russia so apparently in russia if you serve um if you sit sorry in a vip section of most local movie theaters you are served caviar that is crazy i would be all about it i am all about it but i need like the crackers and the creme fraiche and the potato pancake and the blini. <laughs> I'd be all about it. Yeah. I need all the things that go with it. You know, why don't all they serve the that here? With it. I, dude, what, I don't what know. the, what, what the hell, you know, what yeah, about like in well. India where they serve like samosas and Veda? Um, I'm in, I'm a hundred percent about in. that too. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent. in. if anybody out there doesn't know what samosas are, they're like a fried like Indian potato dumpling. stuffed pastry. Mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. but yeah and mm -hmm. veda which is like a deep fried savory item made of like lentil graham flour potato like that sounds pretty good though steven have not. you ever have dude i would eat that up like i love things like chutney and um you know like the yogurt and i love that stuff I, i'm kind of picky about chickpeas like they have a strange texture but i love them in indian food big time yeah i love it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, samosas are crazy good. I love when they have a little heat, a little kick on the back. Um, yeah. have you ever made any of the pastries like using lentils instead of flour? I haven't. I'm, I'm um, long overdue for that. Some red lentils. Now I was kind of bummed out because I thought that at some point, so we're, I'm just going to veer off topic topic for just a moment. Um, I kind of thought at some point that it was, it was like a, a lower carb that the protein and fiber would make up for it. You know what I mean? It's not that I cut carbs or necessarily count them. It's just that I think I thought it was like a better option than it actually is for me. Not saying what's right for anybody else, but I do have a great, it's just red lentils and water um, turns into waffle batter and it is, it's not terrible. So I'll put, an, I'll put an egg white and a scoop of whey protein in there and, it doesn't taste like beans, believe it or not. So it's pretty versatile. Mm. Like, that's pretty impressive. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Where else are we going, Steve? Take uh, us there. Barbados? Barbados. Fish cakes and Banks beer. Fish 
cakes and banks beer made so, from salted cod flour I have tasted, and herbs i've tasted banks beer um in the caribbean it's it's all I right need to. It's I, heineken ish oh i do um, like heineken so that, yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to try so, it so um i've had uh what is the i think it's called aki um it's like the jamaican Fish cake. Stand by while I consult the Googles. <laughs> Ak Aki cod um, or yeah. something similar, right? But yeah, apparently I have those to... are really good, and they they go hand in hand with this beer. I mean, granted, fried food and beer go hand in hand, anyways. But uh, yeah. can you imagine being in a movie theater eating fish fish cakes? Um, no, I can't. But it sounds amazing because. I, good. if you look these up, so everybody out there, if you're kind of curious about, you know, movie theater snacks from around the world, if you look up this combination, it kind of looks like a fish fry on a stick. It's like cod fish and fish. batter and it's all on a skewer and that'll make it really easy to eat. And then hot sauce and beer. It's like, dude, sign me up. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Sign I'd be, me up. I would totally do that. Mm -hmm. What about, what about like in Spain? It's called a calimo mocho, calimoco. Oh, you got it's me. Like what is it? Red wine and cola. Oh yes. See, I've done that just because I was trying to be cool, and somebody else did it. Do you know how much sugar is in red wine and coke mixed together? I don't even want to imagine. Enough that I don't drink it anymore. Enough um, to where that's why I'm hiding <laughs> down to watch my blood sugars. <laughs> It does not taste terrible. Um, it it actually doesn't taste bad at all. It's just a lot. Yeah. So, what about? Would you yeah. ever eat beef jerky at a uh, movie theater? Yes, I would one thousand percent eat beef jerky. In Norway, they do dried reindeer meat. So, I don't know if. Well, they they also uh, the drive-in theater for snowmobiles or the highly nutritious. Low fat reindeer meat. Like, which one would be cooler? You drive up uh, to your movie theater in a snowmobile? Yeah. First of all, if I got to drive a snowmobile, I would freak out because those look like tons of fun. And then right. if I got somewhere, see, I don't know. I have feelings about this because if somebody was like, this is reindeer jerky, I'd be like, Rudolph, no. So I don't know. Yeah. I've eaten caribou. I guess it's close enough. <laughs> Yeah, I, that sounds really good. I, and it all depends, like what, like what kind of seasonings and flavorings are you, they using for this uh, jerky? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would definitely be intrigued. Um, some sort of Norwegian. I it almost makes me wonder if it would like involve kind of equal parts salt and sugar, but like maybe dill or a mm -hmm. juniper berry somewhere in there. Like not the standard hickory flavor, brown sugar, you know, teriyaki type. American wow. beef jerky stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. Steve, did you know, like, we like uh, popcorn salt, like, kind of salty and buttery, but apparently in a lot of places in the United Kingdom and parts of Asia, they serve kettle corn, and that's, that's the standard at a movie theater. I couldn't, I, I mean, well, I could do caramel popcorn. I can't do sugar on popcorn. Does that make sense? Really? No, it makes yeah. zero sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I want salty popcorn, but like I wouldn't mind having like a salty caramel popcorn. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, not just yeah, I can get that that. sugar. Yeah, um, I like the fancy popcorns too. Like they have the popcornopolis, like the the cones of the dark chocolate and white chocolate drizzled popcorn at some movie theaters. I love that stuff. That stuff is incredible. Um, um yeah, yeah, like I could do like. If I do sweet popcorn, like I could do like the chocolate drizzled caramel, maybe like a little bit of marshmallow with my salty popcorn. Notice how mm -hmm. I have to like, and a little bit of that butter flavoring. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like there to be a little bit of a contrast. It can't just be like all totally sweet. Right. So I agree with that. Um, Steve, would you eat souvlaki at a movie theater? Because that's totally. what they do in Greece. Totally. <laughs> I would yeah. do it. Skewered meats and veggies. That is the name of the game in Greek movie theaters. Um, dude, I 
I, we need to change up the game a little. Like, there needs to be some more options. Okay, we're going to play a little game. There's a handful of questions I have for you. It's like okay. a speed round. Let's You've do done it. that with me. Now it's time for me oh, to do that. Oh, it's you. time to pay the piper. All right, Steve. And not only that, but we've talked about some of these already. Okay, then. So very simple, yes or no. <laughs> okay. Ready? <laughs> Yeah, go. Junior mints. No. Raisinets. Yes. Snow caps. Yes. Sour patch kids. Yes. Bunch crunch. Yes. Milk duds. No. Reese's pieces. Yes. Skittles. Yes. Whoppers. Yes. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> <Dot>. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mike and Ike. No. <laughs> Twizzlers. Um, no, but I want to, but no. Good and plenty. No. Hot tamales. No. Lemon heads. Yes. Red vines. Sometimes. Swedish fish. No. Starburst. <laughs> yes. Airheads. Yes. Cookie dough bites. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> Gummy bears. No. Goobers. Yes. Haribo, Haribo gold bears. Oh, yeah. Elite. The same as, it's the same as gummy bears. But the clear one's pineapple. No. <laughs> all right. A lot is all the chocolate ones. I'd be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Everything else would be like, eh. the stuff that, like the, the Mike and Ike's and the tamales and that stuff that's like wax coated or like the dots. I spend the entire movie concentrating on how to get that out of my teeth to where the point, like the, the point of where I can't pay attention. I can't do it. Yeah. That's a treat. Dots. That's a treat. If you want to save it for the next day in the I back of like one of your molders. From dots, Cause all that, it just sticks in your, yeah. on your teeth and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, I don't think I've had dots in years and I don't remember what they taste like. So do you remember the do you remember the boxes of dots that would come in the Halloween candy assortment? Yeah. And it would always be like, yay, a green one, ooh, a purple one. And you get like three in the tiny box. I that's think I ate them just out of principle. <laughs> yeah, dude, just because it was candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> right. All right, Steve, if you could design your own movie theater menu. What would it be? Not the whole thing, but take us on a tour of that menu. What would the concept be? What's the theme? What are we doing? Mm. I feel like it would be a lot of your traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. It would definitely have a mug for soup and Rotis <laughs> sticks. So this though. is like comfort viewing, right? It's what? It's like comfort, comfort yeah. viewing. Yeah. Yeah. But I would also do like the pizzas. I like you can never go wrong with a pizza at a, at a movie. You just have to make sure like the trays that are in front of you are big enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would do more of like instead of a burger, it would be more like a smash burger or mm -hmm. even sliders. I would mm. offer a good little sandwich slider and a burger slider. I would do more upscale hot dogs, I guess you could say. Or yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, or it would be like some sort of corn dog where it's like really badass corn dog, mm -hmm. you know, not just a regular one. I don't think I would do like if I did chicken wings, it would be boneless wings, mm. which aren't really wings, but still mm. just stuff that yeah. you can eat with their nugs. <laughs> yeah, chicken tenders. There you go. They are nugs. Fries, fries. <laughs> I, you know, it. I would offer popcorns, and then you would have like. Instead of just like your hot butter, you would also have hot fudge. You would have hot caramel just in case you had a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. um, that would be hard to maintain, though, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I've i never really dreamt about opening one, but I think that if I were going to, it would be 100% based on nostalgia. So it would show old movies, like probably pick a year and just be like only movies before this. And the theme nights could be like, you know, 
it's a double feature from the 90s and we've made upscale like bagel bites and like upscale craft mac and cheese See, that's and, a like, good idea yeah like my take on you know um mini corn dogs and and things like that not not too hoity-toity you know like not not so upscale as to not be approachable but just nice and better mac and cheese you know? bites yeah 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 so I would, I would, I would love a theme menu. Wouldn't have to be open every day, right? But it would just be like specifically centered around nostalgia, like true yeah. charcuterie. But it wouldn't be like, like it wouldn't be like all up scale fancy. It would be like launchable charcuterie type. You know? Yeah, what I'm saying? but but you could serve it in like a, a bento, but like a fun bento box, with like <laughs> yeah, you know, some some nicer things in there, and then the movie could be like you know kindergarten cop or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Oh man, Steve, I've had a blast talking about this. This is great. <laughs> I want to make like a lot of that now. Thanks a lot. I guess. What are you... <laughs> I guess I have YouTube ideas now. Right. What's your next food adventure? What are you doing next? Uh, the next one is we're going on a cruise to Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and I forgot where else. Oh, but man. we're gonna explore. We're gonna go on a culinary adventure. You better take notes, my man. We're going to talk about it. Lots of pictures. We're going to taco about it. See what I did there? I don't know if they'll have... I don't think they have tacos in Puerto Rico. That's I'm just stereotyping. just being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> it's all paintings and good Any, food. Anything could be a taco if you believed hard enough. You'd find it's a true. tortilla. Like, you make it's it happen. True. You know, just saying. I'm just saying. I think this week, I'm probably going to make either a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie. I'm enjoying the uh, the cooler weather. It's kind of inspired, yeah. inspiring my food choices. I think I'm souped out from the winter, but it's definitely going to be something casserole like, for sure. Oh, Texas Ranch King Ranch casserole. Oh That's my gosh! Well, and the man just answered my own my own question. He answered. But here's laundry. the thing, though: you have to get like pork rinds and throw them in there, crush them up, and then no, put that in with like your sauce and all that stuff and all that cheese. Oh, oh. you're uninvited to my Texas. My King Ranch casserole park. You don't like pork rinds? <laughs> Not in King Ranch. They don't go in there. No, what you, you do wrong. is you, you just <laughs> crush them up. You crush them up and you put that in with all your cheese and stuff like that. And then you get that extra umami saltiness. Oh. Mm. But with like your onions, your garlic, your mushrooms, your peppers, your cheese, your tortillas, your chicken. Or you can do shredded beef too. Do you do shredded beef or shredded chicken? Absolutely not. It's chicken. <laughs> I like chicken with it, but there are times where it calls for beef. I think like you can easily like beef. skew the line between, you know, tamale pie and King Ranch or like King Ranch and enchiladas. King Ranch. And, like, yeah. I would, <laughs> you know, what would be cool to make like a really thick King Ranch casserole and then, yeah, cool it down and then do like deep fried King Ranch bites. Yes. No one's ever done that. Hi, somebody at the state fair. Can you write this down, please? Like, what is happening? Come on. Come on, you guys out there. <laughs> I know what I'm doing for my next cheat meal. Mm -hmm. Dude, for real. Um, all right, Steve. Do you want to be found? You you posted a you posted a video about uh cherry streusel pie. The pictures looked amazing, right? Yes. So cherry yeah. pie. So hey. Chef Stegons on YouTube and Instagram, ChefStevenGonzalez.com, his cookbook, Get Your Grub On. It's a fantastic on cookbook. Face, yep. the book, the book of the on face. The, Facebook, the book of the face. Um, you can find me and us at the Food for Thought Cast, um, dot com. If you have any questions or concerns, or if you have anything that's not a question, I would say, unless it's just heaps and heaps of praise, keep that business to yourself. But food for thought CMC at gmail.com, food for thought cast on Facebook and Instagram. Please don't forget to check out our friends of the show, Jacob, Sage, and Tate over at Good Day for a Movie Podcast, their latest release covered May, December. Um, those guys do a great job, and it is super fun listening over there. Um, if you have littles, it's uh, language advice, kind of like we are. So, but it's a super uh, fun time. It's raucous, it's rowdy, and uh, most of all, those dudes know movies. So, um, give them a listen. We appreciate how they support us. Steve, we gotta go. Well, with that being <laughs> said, we will say bye. Bye. And eat good food. That's a wrap for today. Until the next episode of the Food for Thought cast, make good food, eat good food, share it, and be kind to one another. 
Thanks so much for listening today. You are part of what makes us special, and we are so glad you joined us. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review. Just like food, delicious podcasts are better when you share them with others. Come back for seconds wherever podcasts are served, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Food for Thoughtcast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Food for Thoughtcast or at www.foodforthoughtcast.com, where you can link to all podcast players, or you can send us an email at foodforthoughtcmc at gmail.com.